Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie and this is all about my life after gastric bypass surgery. And today's video is the start of a series that I'm hoping to do about life changes after bariatric surgery. Today's video is about drinking water and specifically that recommendation to wait 30 minutes before and after meals before you drink water again. So let's do a deep dive and really get into this subject and how you tackle that after surgery. So I got a comment the other day from somebody who's in pre-op and they're trying to figure out after surgery how you tackle the recommendation to wait 30 minutes before and after your meals to start drinking water and how you stay hydrated with that kind of restriction, especially if you're looking at maybe a few meals and a couple snacks throughout the day. This specific commenter was saying that their surgeon was recommending 30 minutes before and 60 minutes after. So twice as long as the recommendation that I usually see and what Mexico Bariatric Center recommends. And it was one of those situations where I went to go respond to this person because I try to respond to all comments and questions on my channel and I, it was so in-depth and so complicated that I realized that it probably warranted a video. But there's a lot of things that are what you would consider forever lifestyle changes that are recommended after surgery that are probably bigger topics that can be talked about a little bit more in a more in-depth video. So I'm hoping to turn this into a bit of a series about some of those long-term recommendations, long-term life changes that are really recommended for success after bariatric surgery. But before I get too far into this subject, just a couple housekeeping things. As you probably know, I just want to thank everybody if you're a returning subscriber for continuing to support my channel. It means so much to me. Thank you so much. And if you're not yet a subscriber, I just ask that if at the end of this video you like this kind of content, you like this kind of video and the things that I'm trying to put out there, the best way to support me is to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified every time a video of mine goes live. So if we're talking about hydration after surgery, we're talking about this number one recommendation, stay hydrated. It is so important to stay hydrated after surgery. But then you're told that you really need to limit when you're drinking and giving enough time between things and that at first you're not gonna be able to drink very much, so you're gonna have to take little sips all day long and it's just super overwhelming. I absolutely remember being completely overwhelmed by that. The best piece of advice that I have to start getting used to that and to start understanding what that concept is like and how it might apply after surgery is to start practicing before you have surgery. So the number one thing that I did during my eight week pre-op diet, I mean, other than the completely restrictive diet and trying to get through that, the number one thing that I really tried to focus on was trying to go by that schedule. So I would stop drinking 30 minutes before I was planning to eat, and then I would wait 30 minutes after my meal or after food before I started drinking again. It took a lot of effort and it took a lot of practice. I am extremely glad that I practiced that during pre-op because not only was I able to do that and start getting into that habit, but on pre-op I was getting 90, sometimes 100 ounces of water a day. I was still drinking a lot of water because that was a huge, huge thing I was trying to practice is stay hydrated, but also within those parameters and those restrictions. So I know preoperatively it is 100% possible to drink a ton of water throughout the day with those restrictions in place. Where the complication comes from is after surgery, how you're able to drink that, how, how quickly you're able to drink, how much you're able to drink that is very, very different. So make sure you practice. If you take anything away from this video, it's that you should practice that because it is hard to do. It's hard to get used to, especially if you're like me and you would drink all the time and you drink during dinner. I mean, I was in Weight Watchers for years and in Weight Watchers, they would recommend that between bites, you would stop, put your fork down, take a drink of water, 
A, to help fill yourself up with water so that you eat less food, but B, so that you are taking time to mindfully eat and then you're not just shoveling your food down really quickly. So years I was getting, you know, opposite advice to try to be drinking as much as I can through my meal. And now I'm being told to absolutely cut that out. So yes, it takes a lot to get used to that. That is a habit that's hard to break. Immediately after surgery, it's going to feel super overwhelming. It's going to feel like you can't possibly get enough hydration with the restriction that you have. Right after surgery, they gave me the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest cup I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and they recommended that I drink little tiny sips of that like the day after surgery. I mean, it was really overwhelming to feel, I don't wanna call it pain because it really wasn't a lot of pain and I don't want someone to associate it being like extremely painful, but it was uncomfortable and there was slight pain involved with taking those sips. My stomach had just gotten cut apart and rerouted and there were sutures and it hurt. I mean, it was not the worst pain ever. It was 100% manageable and I will still stand by that today. I really was in way less pain than I was expecting to be after surgery, but starting to drink was uncomfortable and I would get these tummy cramps where every time I would drink a little bit of water, I would get this cramp and it was very obvious that my stomach was churning and moving and doing stomach things and it was uncomfortable with the fact that it had just gone through that traumatic experience. So I was very aware of my insides. <laughs> so it felt overwhelming. How am I going to get enough water? Because the first few days after surgery, I could barely get through the little tiny juice box and the little cup of ice that they had given me to suck on. I mean, it just felt like I was getting nowhere. Now granted, right after surgery, you're on an IV, so it's not that important. The IV is hydrating you, so you're, you're not at risk of dehydration when you're in the hospital. But right afterwards, when they release you that first week on clear liquids, the goal is to aim up to a minimum of 48 ounces. And that's more than two 20 ounce bottles of water, which seems like a lot when you're first out of surgery. Like how the heck am I gonna do that? And honestly, the more you drink, the more you sip throughout the day, the easier it gets. Those cramps, your stomach eases up, it gets used to that sensation and it gets used to having something inside of it again. And that's why you have to go through the stages. You are preparing your stomach. We're sticking with clear liquids for a week, then we're sticking with just thick liquids for a week. You are ramping your stomach back up. You're getting it used to that stuff. So that first couple of weeks is really about hydration. It's about practicing and focusing on getting that hydration. The recommendation is not to move through the stages of food, depending on where you're getting your surgery. You know, some people do clear liquids, thick liquids, purees, soft food. I mean, there are stages to that, but you are not advised to move to the next stage of adding different kinds of food and thicker foods to your system until you can get the hydration down. That is the number one thing. I see people who are completely just antsy to get through the next stage. And they're like, I absolutely, I, I need to figure out when I can eat something. I don't care if it's, you know, absolutely completely blended chicken. I don't care. I need to eat something. And I get that. And it's really difficult, but you really need to have that hydration down first. And if you're somebody who's trying to move on to the next stage, but you can't even drink one bottle of water, you need to focus on that hydration first. That is the number one thing to focus on. The nutritionist told me the food will come in time. You will start to be able to eat. You will start to be able to have more things and you know get that protein recommendation. All of those recommendations post-op, they will come with time. But the, the hydration and the minimum of 48 ounces of fluid is really, really strongly recommended before you start advancing into your foods too far. So that's the other way to start practicing this and to deal with this because you're not even eating yet. So you are just focusing on drinking as much as possible. When you get to the point where you are comfortable, you're drinking enough that you can start moving through the stages, 
you don't really have to wait with the thick liquids because it's still liquids. But here's a tip. I always treat my thick liquids as if it's a meal. And I would recommend that you do treat your thick liquids as if they're meals. You're not really trying to get hydration from eating a yogurt or having a protein shake. You are doing that mostly for the protein. And in order to make sure that you're absorbing that protein, you're getting the most out of eating or drinking that food, you want to try to treat it as if it's a meal. Because one of the main reasons that you wait 30 minutes after a meal to start drinking again is because you don't wanna push things through your system too quickly. So if you just drank a protein shake and you're like, awesome, 30 grams of protein, I'm starting the day off you know, really great, but then you immediately start drinking a bunch of water, you could push that through your system quicker because your stomach is kind of like a funnel and that water is gonna go through your system a heck of a lot faster than thick liquids and more importantly than food. And so if you start pushing those things through your system too quickly because it's washing it out with that water, you're not actually going to be absorbing all of that protein. So although you just drank 30 grams of protein, did you actually absorb, did you actually get 30 grams of protein? And the same concept goes for any of those thick liquids. If you're having a pureed thick liquid soup, you're not getting any of the nutrients from that if you just wash it away really quickly. If we back up a little bit and talk specifically about this recommendation for not drinking 30 minutes before a meal, it's not necessarily because you don't wanna wash things through your system too quickly as much as it can fill you up. If we go back to that recommendation I had years ago on Weight Watchers to drink a sip of water between every bite, part of that recommendation was to try to fill you up a little so you don't overeat your food. So having that liquid in your stomach will give you a sensation of being full. How many times in your life when you've been dieting has somebody said, just drink a whole bunch of water so you can trick your stomach into being fuller than it really is and you don't eat food or you don't snack. That's a huge, huge diet culture advice. It's huge advice. Drink a bunch of water so you're not hungry. There is some truth to that. You are filling your stomach and you're going to be a little less hungry. You're going to have a bunch of space in your stomach that is taken up by water instead of food. So when you are moving over to start eating food, if you have a whole bunch of water in your system, you're not gonna be able to eat as much. And when we're talking about people with tiny tummies because of surgery, not being able to eat a lot because it's full of water is cut even more than it should be. You already have a tiny tummy. You don't, you don't want to be limiting your food that much. You still need food to survive. <laughs> you still need nutrients. You still need energy. You need that. So you don't want to take up room in your stomach with water before a meal because you want to get the most out of that meal. You already can't eat very much. So get the most out of it that you can. About a week or so after surgery, I was easily getting about 48 ounces of liquid, sometimes up to 60, 62 ounces without too much of a problem. But when you start to add in real food, that's when things change. And I was noticing that although the recommendation was to wait 30 minutes after a meal to start drinking again, I wasn't really feeling ready to start drinking again until maybe more like an hour after a meal. And so I noticed that I was starting to have a really hard time staying hydrated once I started actually eating soft and you know regular foods again. Weeks three, four, five, six after surgery, I suddenly couldn't drink as much as I could before because I just didn't feel like I could drink right away. And so it takes some experimenting and it takes some work. And the best I can say is practice and do the best you can. There were certainly some times when I felt like I needed to focus on hydration and I backed way off of food and I focused on drinking because you can feel when that's necessary. So practice, 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 and do the best you can. It will get better over time. And it wasn't until several months after surgery that I really challenged myself to drink more water and realized that I can drink 
pretty much like normal now. I don't have to take tiny sips. I don't have to worry about the amount that I'm drinking at a time. I can chug a bunch of water. I can drink a whole bunch out of my, my tumbler and I don't have that kind of restriction. It doesn't hurt. There, there's nothing about drinking massive amounts that bothers me. So now that I know that, I can do that and I can just sit there and drink a larger amount and not worry about just taking tiny sips throughout the day. But you have to work up to that. It will eventually ease up. It'll eventually get easier. And lastly, what are some strategies that I have for getting through the day? I really try to get certain amounts of water, certain amounts of hydration down by certain milestones throughout the day so that I know that I'm meeting my goals. Some days are better than others. I'm human. Sometimes I just don't hit my hydration goals and I really, really focus the next day on hitting those goals so that I'm having some sort of balance in my life. I try to have something like a Gatorade Zero or a Body Armor Light or, you know, some sort of like a bottle of something. I don't know. Are those like 16, 20 ounces or so? I try to have one of those in the mid morning before lunch. So I've already gotten a little bit down. Then I take a break for lunch. I eat my food. And then by the time that I'm ready to start drinking again, about 30 to 60 minutes after a meal, I will focus on trying to have this tumbler. Sometimes it's full of water, sometimes it's full of crystal light, whatever I need to get me through the day is what I'm gonna do. If it's a bunch of crystal light and Gatorade Zero and stuff, so be it. I need the hydration. Don't beat yourself up if you just can't get the plain water down. Do what you need, do what you can to get that hydration in. This is like 32 ounces or something like that. I do notice, by the way, I drink a lot more plain water like when it's hot in the summertime and I just want that way less in the winter. So I stick to a lot of like crystal light and stuff, but uh, whatever it takes, like I said, so this is about 30, 32 ounces, I think. And I try to get one of those down before dinner. So that puts me at, I don't know, roughly 50 ounces or something. And then usually in the afternoon, I will have a glass of tea. I think I still have half of one left that I didn't even realize. Oh, it's cold. I'll have a glass of tea I don't know, 12, 16 ounces, depending on the size of the cup, which is putting me in the 60 ounce range of liquid. Editing Stephanie here. I forgot one of my bigger tips as well, which is that anytime I have to drive anywhere, anytime that I'm in the car, I make sure to bring a bunch of hydration, a bunch of you know, whether it be prepackaged, you know, Gatorades or something or filling my tumbler or grabbing a water bottle out the door, whatever it takes. Um, I spend quite a bit of time now and again for work driving 45 minutes at a time. And that is an excellent time to work on hydration, making sure that anytime you're traveling, anytime you are in the car or anything, make sure that you're bringing a bunch of hydration with you. Um, if I go to the dog park or anything with the dog, I always make sure to have bottles of stuff with me because that is a great time to focus on that and work on that uh, while you're out and about. Where I fall off on my hydration is always after dinner. I have a tendency to not drink as much after dinner unless I am trying really hard to make up for lost hydration during the day, in which case I'll drink a whole, a whole lot. <laughs> but I have a tendency to just stop thinking about it after dinner. And part of that is because if I drink too much after dinner, I have to go to the bathroom all night long and I can't stand that. <laughs> But I consider it a successful day if I've gotten about 60 ounces of hydration throughout the day. One other thing that I will mention is that I noticed after a certain amount of time that it does not bother me nor inhibit me to drink pretty much right up until a meal. So for the longest time, I was waiting 30 minutes before I was planning to eat a meal. But over time, I did realize that I could drink up until a meal and wait just a few minutes while I basically, you know, prep food and get it together. And it did not inhibit me. I did not feel over full. I didn't feel, you know, any sort of uh, limitation or restriction when it comes to having water in my system beforehand. You may be different. 
And part of that may be different because of the type of surgery. So because I had gastric bypass, I've talked about this before, there is no more pyloric sphincter in my stomach that helps regulate when you know food and water gets pushed into your intestines. Therefore, it's much more like a funnel in the sense that that water is going to go through my system a lot faster than somebody who had the gastric sleeve because the gastric sleeve leaves your stomach anatomically the same aside from the fact that it's smaller. So you still have a sphincter that is slowly regulating how quickly food gets released into your intestines. Water may build up in your stomach a little bit more and you may feel that a little different if you have the gastric sleeve versus bypass. And some people with bypass may feel really full with water. It is kind of a personal thing. I have realized over months and months that that doesn't bother me. So that really made things a lot easier for me over time because I was able to drink, not think about it until I have a meal and then I would wait because I really do still feel to this day that if I drink too soon, after I eat, I get very uncomfortable. It takes practice, it takes time, and it really takes getting to know yourself and your body. This whole process, pretty much down to every little detail, is going to boil down to you listening and understanding your body and what you need. So there are general recommendations, but it really, really depends on you and how you react to some of these things. It is quite difficult to get used to that kind of eating and drinking style after surgery, but now I fully am used to it. It really doesn't bother me. I don't even think about it really. And sometimes I will have a sip of something right after I eat and I immediately go, mm, no, I don't think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna wait a little bit longer. And it's, it's not that big of a deal. I will acknowledge that that's me some people have a much different experience. Some people get much more uncomfortable. So I do acknowledge that I personally have had a pretty easy time with that. But I really think if you are used to what your body needs, if you're listening to what your body needs, and you are just generally going through those recommendations, it's not going to be that, that bad. It sounds so much worse than it actually is. And I promise it is so much easier to get used to it once you're actually through the surgery and having to practice it as a, a, a daily thing in your life. I hope that was helpful. If you guys have any recommendations for other things that you've heard that are, you know, lifetime changes that you have to make after surgery and you're wondering how do you make that change and how do you incorporate that in your life, let me know in the comments. I would love to continue this series because there are multiple things that are recommended that you do for the rest of your life. And sometimes it can be overwhelming to hear that, especially if you haven't gone through surgery yet. And you're like, how the heck am I supposed to do that? So if you have any questions or you have anything that you've heard of, I would love to do another video on this type of topic. But until then, make sure that you're staying happy and healthy, taking care of yourself, always looking at the big picture, and I will see you guys in the next one.